okay okay good day guys welcome back <coughs> welcome back to our youtube channel so just like always uh guys me is stifler and stifler is me you know how it goes so today we are on trigonometry right guys trigonometry grade 11 so guys let me just uh tell you a hint about this grade 11 trick is so much enjoyable guys it's so much nice because we just have the six type of three questions that repeat over and over again. So we are just going to deal with six type of questions that we are going to repeat over and over again, guys. So I can give you uh, <coughs> the type of three questions that we are going to deal with. So I like to separate these into six types, but actually there are just three types of questions. So we have this first type that says... Um, if maybe sine of 30 is equals to k and then they say find values of like that and then the second trick type of question is when they give you that uh, maybe they say if uh, 3 sine theta is equals to 1 and uh, maybe they say cos theta is less than zero and then they say find values of and so on and so on and then from then we have uh the simplify type of question simplify uh the one that you have to simplify the ratios uh we're going to deal with that and also we have this type that is proving identities proving identities and we have the fifth type which is the general solution general solution and we also have the last type of trick question that is solving the equation solving the equation so if you try to look to take a look at this uh, <coughs> these two type of trick questions they're actually the same right we use the same uh, rules to deal with this and these two they're also the same type and lastly these two they're also the same so i'm going to show you how we can be able to deal with these questions uh one after the other right so let's get straight to it so how can we deal with this one how can we deal with these guys so i just want to remind you that uh mathematics is a building block right it is a building block so we build knowledge on top of the knowledge that we already know right so when we are uh, facing a problem now that's when we can unpack those building blocks and we we pick out the ones that are suitable to solve whatsoever that we want to solve right but now when it comes to trick guys um the same type of questions are treated the same way right so just like uh what i'm teaching you now i'm teaching you the tools the tools you can use to solve this type of questions so i'm giving you the tools that you can use to unlock any type of trick question right so the trick that you have already dealt with in grade 10 it is already the theorem of uh Peter Goras, right we've already dealt with the theorem of pythagoras and already it is a tool that can help us to um unlock some of the three questions here right and also we talked a bit about the cartesian plane so we talked a bit about the cartesian plane but we are going to expand when it comes to grade 11 work so always remember this as well and we also talked about the ratios right that are sine of theta is equals to opposite over hypotenuse and also it it is equals to y over r so if you haven't watched um, our grade our grade 10 trigonometry uh, videos you can click on this link to watch these videos right and also cos theta we have seen that it is equals to a over h which is also the same as x over r right and lastly our turn of 
theta is equals to <coughs> O over A, which is the same as Y over X. So it means that we are going to explore more now on these so that we can bring about the grade 11 work and I'll also be showing you the tools that you will be using to unlock any trig question. So let's get straight to it. So guys in grade 10 uh, we have learned this uh, cast thing that uh, all ratios are positive in the first quadrant only sine is positive tangent is positive and only cos is positive in that quadrant right so all you have to know is that uh, if the angle is positive it means that it is actually measured in the anti-clockwise direction so any angle that is positive it is measured anti-clockwise and any angle that is measured negative it is being measured in the clockwise direction right so this is simple to handle guys uh, any positive angle it is going there right so now so it means that our angles will start at zero degrees so this is our zero degree line so the more we extend our angles they'll come to this so this is 90 this is 180 and again when you extend this is 270 and again it comes back to 360 right so this uh, our Cartesian so the difference here it is 90 degrees throughout these planes right I hope this is simple to understand right but what do we have to understand here what do we have to to, to, to to catch like what is the tool that is important here so the most important things to understand here are these guys so it means that any angle that you are given that is between 0 and 90 degrees, it means that it is falling in the first quadrant. So it means that any ratio has to be positive there, right? So any angle now that is between 90 and 180 now, between 90 and 180, it is from this to this. Any angle that is between 90 and 180, it means that it is in the second quadrant and any angle that is between 180 and 270 it means that this angle is in the third quadrant as simple as that and any angle between 270 to 360 it will fall in the fourth quadrant as simple as that so any angle between <coughs> 0 and 90 it should be positive for all ratios because it is in the first quadrant any angle that is falling between 90 and 180 now it will depend on the ratio if it is sine it means that that angle should be positive if it is tangent it means that that angle here should be negative as simple as that right i hope you understand this guys this is uh, very simple okay so are you able to use that guys are you able to use that information okay let's let's try so they said which quadrants are these angles uh in so they gave us angle two two three degrees and the second one they give us angle one five three so they're asking which quadrants are these angles falling in right so it means that we can draw our cute cartesian plane like that <coughs> right and know that this is zero this is 90 this is 180 270 and then 360 so now they're asking which quadrants are these falling into we know that uh, our 223 it is between 180 and 270 it means that this angle is falling in the third quadrant and then now 153 we know that our 153 is between 90 and 180 so 153 must be falling in the second quadrant as simple as that don't forget that this is your first your second your third and your fourth quadrant so this is as simple as that so are you able to do that so let me just give you 
a checkpoint which you can uh, check if you are able to solve this right so now now let's try to combine the knowledge of quadrants and the knowledge of ratios in different quadrants right so according to ratios we know this we know that all and then sine and then tan and then cos right so this is zero this is 90 180 270 and then 360 right uh, so before I uh, go into this work, can you please make sure that you've done our checkpoint 7 so that um, you can be able to handle this work now, right? So, as I said, we want to combine the knowledge of the quadrants and the knowledge of the ratios in different quadrants, right? So, as I said, so it means that all ratios, all ratios are positive when we're having any angle that is between 0 and 90 degrees because from 0 to 90 degrees all ratios are positive right so it means that only sine now only sine of theta it is positive when we're having any angle that is between 90 and 180 degrees right and now uh, only tan theta becomes positive if you're having any angle that is between 180 and 270 right it is here 180 to 270 only the turn is positive and only our cos of theta becomes positive when we're having an angle between 270 and 360 can you see that as simple as that so what can we conclude from this so what can we conclude from this so we can only conclude that it means that sine theta is positive uh, from zero degrees to 180 this is where our sign is positive so it means that uh, if we're having anything that is from 180 to 360 it means that our sign now becomes negative and here our sign is positive right and then we are going to cos of theta now our cos of theta now becomes positive from 0 to 90 and also in the fourth quadrant where there is 270 to 360 this is where our cos is positive so it this and this quadrant and where is it negative so it means that our cos is now negative so this is negative <coughs> between 90 and 270 so between 90 and 270 it means that our cos is negative our cos becomes negative here and there between 90 and 270 right and also <coughs> our turn of theta now becomes positive uh, between uh, 0 and 90 and also 180 to 270 this is where our tangent is positive and then where is our tangent negative now so it means that our tangent now is negative between 90 and 180 and also sorry about that between 90 and 180 and also between 270 to 360 our tangent is negative right as simple as that and what are other conclusions can we draw from this other conclusions that you can draw are this so it means that sine is negative where it is not positive so sign becomes negative everywhere that it is not positive we only know that sign is positive here and there so it means that it becomes negative here and there and cos is positive here and there so it becomes negative there and there 
and then our tangent is positive there and there so it becomes negative there and there as simple as that so what is the lesson that you have to understand now or where will that help you in let's try to look at an example they said you must work out the signs of these ratios so just like always let's start off with our small Cartesian plane like that. So we know that this is 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360, right? So again, this is our first, this is our second, this is our third, and this is our fourth, right? So they said we must work out cos of 115. So where is 115 falling in? 115 is between 90 and 180. It means that this angle is in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, we know that our cos is negative. So this angle becomes negative. So it means that this becomes negative ratio. Can you see how we can work this out? So this becomes negative. So it means that our cos here, it is negative. The cos of this angle, you're going to get a negative value let's work out the following they said the tangent of 190 so let's check what is 190 degrees it is falling between 180 and 270 can you see that so this is where our 190 is in so it means that now our 190 it is in the third quadrant and we know that in the third quadrant our tangent is positive so it means that this ratio gives us a positive answer. Can you see that? So this will always give us a positive answer because it is in the third quadrant. Let's try to take a look at sine of 300. So our 300 is falling between 270 and 360. So this is the fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant. So we're going to ask ourselves, is sine positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? sign is negative so it means that this becomes our negative so it means that this uh, solution is going to give us a negative answer as simple as that so again i'm going to leave you with a checkpoint that you can work on so you can try to do our checkpoint eight from the trick uh, series and i can end this lesson here uh, for the length of the video guys so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe guys and see you on the next one